welcome everybody to another week in Toku in Go Toku Review. I am the Pope Rams uh, Pope Rivera. To the left of me is Pope Sanseto. How are you doing today? Good. Good of yourself. I am very good. I am very good this week. This week was a really good well, yeah, it's actually a pretty good week of Tokusatsu this week. I I'm pretty down with it. I actually really liked all the shows this week. Yeah, the latter part of this week's episodes were, were really good. Uh, Sans the first one that we're going to be talking about, which is why we're talking about it first. But, um, yeah, a really, really strong week in Sentai and Kamen Rider. Yeah, no, not even that. I, I kind of like this Mega Force episode. Like, there's some things I liked. So, when... And the episode started off with... Um, it started off with uh, Troy. He, he hears Emma singing. And then from there, that the from there, no, actually, no. It started off with the monsters. Their monsters are like, we have a new monster, and he just starts playing the, this obnoxious sound, the obnoxious music, and he's like, yeah, rock on. And then we cut to Troy finding um, Emma, who's singing, and then the monster appears, and the monster is playing this obnoxious music that no one can get it. Like they just can't get it out of their heads. And then what ends up happening is the music is so it. it devastates both Troy and Emma that they just can't hear any other kind of music. By the way, it's funny. It's like you see, you see these two kids like walking nearby Emma with like a like a boombox. Those are like the most polite kids in the world. <laughs> that like they turn it off when she asks politely. If it was if it was any other if it was a realistic school, that would have not. They, they would have just been like, yeah, they they would have just like thrown it out and saying no. Like they would have, <laughs> like, yeah. He really did. I was like, wow, these are like the most polite kids ever. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> after that, they go to er no, we cut to Ernie's, and Ernie starts playing a song. Same thing happens to Troy, who can't take any kind of music whatsoever. So they're like, well, what the hell is happening here? And then they figure out, oh, it's the monster. And then they then they explain that's like, oh, you know, the only way they can they can get around this is through Emma's song and. Boy, she has an amazing pair of pipes on her. And I mean that in like the most sincere way. She is a really, really, really good singer. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah, like, like as I was explaining it to you earlier, she has an actual, like, a really, really good outstanding career in, you know, overseas. And so it's kind of no surprise that they picked her, but it's awesome that they're doing more with international actors because I've seen a few uh, commercials of hers and uh, a few of them were, I think, from, from Thailand. Or Taiwan, I believe. I'm not too sure. One of the ties. But um, yeah, no, she has a, a pretty decent career overseas. So that that yeah, it, that, if that it can attest for anything, yeah, she is. Uh, uh, she's uh, very talented, I should say. Yeah, I don't blame her. Um, like like I said, like you know, we we dog on the actors for not having good acting abilities, but like sometimes it's like we have to stop and we have to stop and take a step back and we have to realize. Like, why did they hire a lot, of these, a lot of these actors? Maybe because of their good looks, or maybe a lot of their like a lot of them have physical comedy or a lot of physical stuff that they can work with. And I think in Emma's yeah. case, she she really like her strength was her singing abilities, and I was like, wow, she is a beautiful singer. And then the yeah, episode, yeah. They, so other than that, the episode then goes on. They fight the monster again they, with the power of her song. They were they unite themselves. They were able to break the spell. And then they were able to help on their Megazords and defeat the monster. And then after that, they go to the cut back to Ernie's juice bar, and like Ernie's like, I heard the most beautiful song to I heard the most beautiful song today, and they all think, oh, it must be Emma's song. But then he plays a song, and it's all uh, the monster song, and it's like, wah wah. But I don't know for some reason I actually got a chuckle out of it. I don't know why. So. I'm, in my opinions on the episode, like, it, just to make it really brief, is that the this episode taught me that, like I said before, that it really shows that, like, I'm starting to see why they hired a lot of these actors, and, like, we can't really, like, it's starting to, I'm starting to see now a little bit more what's going on with them. And what's good yeah. about this is that, like I said, um, Emma's, Emma's act actress... She's like you know we could, we dog on her we dog on her for so much throughout these episodes, but at the same time this episode proved to me it's like there's more going on with with all this like maybe you know we should like not that we should like we we have our we've always talked to death about like what our opinions are on 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 their acting, but mm -hmm. we 
also need to also realize too, and this episode was a very good example of this, was that the actors were chosen for a specific reason, either because of their good looks or maybe because like they're, or maybe in the case like the original Power Rangers, a lot of these actors, um, they had they they had very minimal um, acting abilities, but like they but they were very good. They have something artists. else that kind of adds to it, yeah. Whether it be martial arts, a singing career, things along the lines of that that actually kind of help their characters as as they are. So that's probably just the majority of it with the with this cast. I mean, as you were saying, um, I believe her name is I can't remember her last name, but Christina, basically the the actress that play or the actor that plays Emma, uh, yeah, she has a wide range of talents more than just you know good looks. She's actually you know has a very good singing voice, and you know she's a decent actor in and of herself. Um, I'm really not going to explain any more just because I don't want to get too opinionative in the situation. But for the most part, it's just, yeah, they, they have their own merits, and, you know, that really shows with certain things. It's just, it's not really evident in every circumstance of the actual show, but there are certain things that are actually, like, happen with them, and then you'll actually see where they're coming in or where they're coming from or what they, you know, have with them. Yeah. And the, the name is, um, her name is actually, I had it right here. Um, it was actually Christina Ma- uh, Masterson. Wait. Yeah. Okay. So, other than that, like, yeah, like I said, we 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 dog a lot on these. Uh, we dog a lot on these early episodes, but then I think we're gonna start seeing a little bit more range now that the series is starting to get out of their form. Like, yeah. introducing each ranger, what what each ranger does. So, now that we're out of that phase, now we're gonna be going a little bit to more why a little bit more in their acting abilities, a little bit more, hopefully. And like I said before, in the last episode, we got to see a little bit more, like, I wouldn't say too much, but there was a little bit more going on with, like, Troy, who I always dogged on, had, like, a very wooden personality. But as, well, in the episode before, we saw that he is very, when when he was doing all the mind control things, he was very, I would say, like, he was actually kind of good as, like, this, like, you know, very physical kind of actor. So it's like, I'm pretty sure he was chosen because of his like martial arts background if anything yeah i don't doubt that at all so um so that's about it i kind of want to keep this brief because like they're really, like i said it's pretty it's pretty cookie cutter for the most part but like it's pretty good that now we're seeing a little bit more going on and i i said like there is some there is some merit even though you know it was kind of a you know cut and paste kind of episode yeah yeah definitely so why don't we go on to our next show then? I think uh, why don't we go on to Kyoryuger? Yeah, Jiden Sentai Kyoryuger. So, um, the thing about this episode is that we actually have the full formation of the team, which I mean it, it's kind of done earlier on in the series, but with this they actually did kind of a a different approach to it. I mean they they've done so with you know, previous series, but with this particular season, what they did was they kind of gradually introduced the cast and was in a love, in and of themselves. Um, I'm sorry, I've been drinking a bit today. Uh, so, the first part of the episode, you know, the first part of the series we had where, you know, Kiri Red, uh, Daigo basically introduces himself to everyone else. Everyone else is a bit standoffish, feeling that, you know, it'd be better if we don't get too personal and then we'll be better as a team, since it'll be basically just business at this point. Um, then you have Ami and Nobu get won over by, you know, uh, by Daigo's, uh, you know, um, I w- let's see, what's the best way to explain it? They get won over by his personality. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good then way of describing that, it. Yeah, and then right after that, you have uh, Soji. He gets the same thing. Pretty much, he gets won over by Daigo's personality. And, um, let's see, uh, Ian. And, uh, in, in this situation, in this episode, we actually see where Ian comes from. Yeah. And his, his, his backstory, kind of. So, the start of the episode, they're all in the, uh, they're all in the restaurant. They're all hanging out. And, um,. Ian's just sitting there to himself. He's with the girl, and uh, they they ask him, you know, are you in here every day with the girl? And he's just like, oh, blah blah blah, my time's precious, blah 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 blah. Uh, he's being kind of like a chauvinistic pig in this situation, but it kind of helps his character out a lot because yeah, he's really not does. he's not just one of those guys who's just like, oh, you know, 
it, it's as I explained earlier, it's a bit of a different pace as far as most rangers are concerned. Because normally you have it where you have the you know the green rangers, the goofy one, the kind of this. I wouldn't say the, the, the like the third command. I guess yeah. if that makes sense, because you have red and you have the you know blue. Generally, is going to be the one that's like you know kind of high strong and the one that's really hard to win over. But in this situation, it was more or less the opposite. I would say because Soji is extremely serious. Like he is probably one of the most serious greens I've ever, I've seen in quite yeah. time, as far as like an actual member of the cast. Um, and then it's the opposite where the Black Ranger is extremely carefree about where he is and where he stands with the actual team itself. So with that, I mean, it's it's a different change of pace. Yeah, and the thing is, like, we will usually associate Blue with like the second in command, but here he is fills in that role of the goofy guy. Yeah, well, I wouldn't necessarily... Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, that, that is completely correct. But like, also with this... Go on. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's like, you know, even though he's not that goofy, he's sort of like the butt of all jokes, because as we saw in the last episode, everyone's just calling him an old man, and it's like, oh, it, you too? Come on! Yeah, he's the OG son of the group. Uh, so, um, the thing with this too is that uh, this is one of the... I mean... Outside of um, outside of Goanger, this is the kind of one of the few times where we have a male-dominated cast. Yeah. And you have more than one specific personality for Ranger type, like how we were explaining. You know, you normally have this particular you know type uh, of personality as this Ranger or this designation, but there's a bit more to them. I, I guess in this situation, I mean, if if there was another female member of the team, I think they would probably have the same. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say the same personality, but some something similar to that, if if that makes any sense. Yeah, um, though someone will fill in that role. Well, some someone else will fill in that role pretty well. Yeah, basically, but, yeah. Yeah, but um, one of the things like one of the things I liked about the episode, like in general, was the fact that like e- there's a lot more going on with Ian. And Ian, like, we only, like, and this is what I like about the progression is, like, there's a lot more going on. And here in the case, like, he, he, his best friend gets captured, gets killed by the enemy, and, like, you know, he's in the search for him. And it's just, like, that is a, that is a good motive. And then it's, like, you get a sense. He also he personally is. blames himself for this situation, too. Because mm-hmm. he's just, like, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't more precise with my shot. And... You know, because he's, 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 he's obviously, you know, the gunman of the group. Mm-hmm. He's the one who, you know, kind of prides himself on his shot. Yes, he does. And so, yep. that, yeah, so you have that, that sort of aspect from him. And um, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of a, like a different thing as far as it goes. Because have there really, uh, in Goanger... I'm just going to kind of compare this series because the the, Ra- the Ranger designations are somewhat similar. Sans, you know, yellow being opted out for pink in this situation. But, yeah. I mean, uh, Gunpei wasn't really... Uh, not Gunpei, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, I honestly, I didn't watch too on, much of um, Launcher. I don't think um, I'm the only one in this situation because it was Hanto? kind of a... Not Hanto. Well, I know Hanto was Hanto was go on green, and he was oh, just a, a straight up. Uh, no, ha- um, no, Gunpei. no. It was Gunpei. Gunpei was uh, the Black Ranger, right? Yes, go on Gunpei black. was good. Uh huh. And he was kind of a bit more serious, wasn't he? Yeah, he has a little bit more serious. Funny thing is, you know who you know who, you know who his best who Ian's best friend is played by. Who? It's played by Go on Black. That was Go on Black. I am not kidding you. I'm looking at. Oh my god, <laughs> what what makeup work did they do to him? He looks somewhat. He looks so old. I mean, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and look through. Oh crap! I think it's the hair. The hair <laughs> is the thing. Yeah, it, because it, I'm it, used to. Him. I'm used to seeing. I'm used to seeing him with that that palm. I just pulled up the episode right now, and I'm looking at it. Yeah, Mufoni Shiro. It. it it, it looks. It, I can see it now. I can definitely see it, but yeah, it's it's really it's really interesting. I honestly didn't. Wow, I didn't piece two and two together. I mean, I was like quick to catch the uh, Yumi Kinoshita, um, and uh, and Dinah Black, but like, because I, I guess yeah, like I said, I didn't care. I didn't watch too much of uh, of Goanger, so yeah, that in there yeah. lies my fault. But um, yeah, that's that's really interesting. I did not know that. 
like we're talking about we're talking up about here we're talking about Go Gunpei and we're like, wait a bit. <laughs> you know the guy was <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I get I wonder if that has anything to do with the actual character himself. Like I really I wonder if that has like any sort of like kind of like um What's the word I'm looking for? I wonder if that has any sort of effect on the actual character himself. Yeah, I mean, more or less. Just the just just uh, Ian's personality type. I wonder if that's you know as a result of this, like you know, like oh, we'll make him you know just like you know uh, what's it called? We'll make him you know like, like uh, yeah, which I, 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 wouldn't be I guess they could. Like, I wouldn't be surprised because like I, I I would like from what I hear, even though even though like depends on who who you ask, go on your. It's real. It wasn't that successful, but it's really been. It's really beloved by by its fans. Like they're. If you're not into it, then you're not into it. But those who are, they're like really hardcore into it. So I wouldn't be yeah, surprised like, if like they, if a lot of the, if a lot of the people that were working on Goanger, were work are now currently working on this, and they're like, well, let's pay let's pay tribute to the fans and see what, how far we can go with this. Yeah, like um, what was it? Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to a buddy of mine, Ar- Artie. I, I, you know, I hope he actually listens to the podcast and he actually you know comments about this. But he's a real, real big Go Andre fan, and uh, I was actually talking to him about that. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I um, I kind of took a break from Sentai for a while. Like I would say, um, probably around I think I'm gonna say from close to about 2005. Up until about 2007, when Geki Ranger appeared, and I loved Geki Ranger. I'm probably one of the few that actually does. But um, yeah, I, I just it just felt kind of weird going from Geki Ranger to Go Onger, at least in my standpoint. Um, but no, he was telling me he's like, dude, give it a chance. He's like, I gave Bokenger a chance for you, and I'm like, dude, but Bokenger is awesome. But you know, it, it, I wouldn't say necessarily it's favoritism in this situation. But no, he uh, he's kind of the one that's been campaigning me to to rewatch Goanger, and I'm honestly probably going to do it just because you know I've heard the cast is just hilarious. But um, yeah, I haven't honestly given it too much thought, and I, I guess I should feel kind of ashamed for myself in doing this. But uh, I've heard it's really really good. At least yeah, like you said, it's it's well reserved by its fans. But um, yeah, either it's you probably be or you're not. Yeah. But, and, and, and that's the thing, it's like, um, Stan and Deb also like it too, and like, I, I didn't mean to give it a chance myself, I think now that I got, now that I, I'm more stable now with my life, I think I'm gonna start, like, I'm gonna sit down and watch, um, just marathon, uh, fresh series from beginning to end, on my, in my free time, so I think that, I think that's the one I'm gonna choose. Um, Yay, Rami! Thank you, thank you very much, but, um... Another thing I liked about this episode is like, and this is something I caught really quick uh, in the corner of my eye while I was watching. Um, when we we see the bad guys, when you see the bad guys that they're introducing the villain of the, uh, the monster of the day, and he's like introducing himself like you know I steal this and that and this and that blah blah blah, and then you see Lucky Roo in the back, <laughs> and this is what I love about Sentai now is you see him just like there's this random stuff happening in the back. Now, and this is something I think they've been doing since, um, Go Andre, not Go Andre, since Go Kiger, where it's like something, something is happening in the back and no one's paying attention to what's happening in the back. Yeah, it's random little things that they kind of insert into the episode of itself. Like, it's um, just random stuff that you see. Yeah, I, I pointed this out at one time when I was watching, um, when I was watching Go Busters, Jay, for some apparent reason, was worshipping the sun god in the background for some reason. <laughs> Like, what oh, the man. fuck are you doing? Yeah, it's, 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 I wonder if they just add stuff like that in just to see if anyone's kind of, like, I would say paying attention in a sense, but it is pretty interesting to see nonetheless. Yeah, I was um, thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking, this, this particular enemy, you're reminding me of one in particular, I, I, I love Die Ranger, but I can't remember the enemy's name for whatever reason. Um, he was the, uh, 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 Shoji and uh, I'm pulling up the episode right now. The episode right now. Shoji and Ryo, they uh, they team up to fight this particular enemy. He uh, he's the dude with the um, uh, yeah, I have it right here. The Birdcage Vagrant. Do you remember that episode? Uh, it was the man vaguely. with the golden leg. Yeah. Where basically it's a uh, yeah, where he's uh, he's a super powerful warrior and he had this you know this a super powerful golden leg. But they took the golden leg from him, and now he's just a vagrant. But he's basically, he's like a birdcage. And, um, 
Interesting. This enemy just reminded me so much of him. Uh, he's the one that could actually kind of trap people. He, he was a, you remember, he captures, uh, he has that bird with him. That bird that, that, that captures people and paints them in the birdcage. And then uh, Shoji gets captured in order to go ahead and rescue this little girl. But um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. Dire Ranger episode 32. It's the, uh, it's the, um, yeah, the, uh, the birdcage Golden vagrant. Golden kick. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one. Exactly it. Um, uh, but yeah, that that I saw that and I'm like, holy shit, that reminds me of the Birdcage Vagrant. And then uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine about it, and he's like, who? And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. You haven't watched, so you know, you haven't watched Die Ranger. You suck. I'm looking at it right now. Holy what? crap, he does look exactly like him. It's crazy. Exactly. See. So, um, but yeah, no. Uh, this particular, yeah, yeah uh, this particular enemy, he was a little weird. He basically, he kind of grabbed you, and he was just like, "Okay, I'm gonna." It was, he was basically taking your life force out, wasn't he? Like, he yeah, was just, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So he uh, you can go through the episode, and uh, he shows up, and so Ian's just like, "Oh, I'm gonna take this guy out. I have my own vendetta against him." And the other guys are like, "Wait, don't do it!" But he does it, and uh, so that kind of, you know causes things to escalate quite a bit. Yeah, oh, and so it's at, is, um, what ends up happening is Ian, he takes one of the he takes one of the batteries, but it's so unstable that it, he tries using it, and literally the thing just backfires. Like, he literally gets sent flying, and Daigo's like, he just catches him, and then a random car explodes. I'm like, cars don't work that way. Yeah, because uh, I've... I've I, I, I do a lot of extracurricular activities. I'm, I'm not going to say, like, I steal cars or shit like that, but uh, I, I, um, I, uh, I skate. I, I do uh, boarding down hills. Yeah. And uh, I've had it where I've gone into the side of a car almost about as, as, <laughs> almost about as like full that. force as they have. And, uh, I mean, I, 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 I bruised a few ribs and stuff like that, but nothing, like, I, I don't think I've ever made a car explode, at least to my knowledge. Um, like, seriously, it's like Michael, that's like, was Michael B. on, on set that day? What? When I saw that, I was like, what? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, oh, wait, we gotta stop it. It's gotta be like a Ford, it's gotta be like a Ford Pinto or something like that, that, that must have exploded right on contact, or Michael Bay was on set that day, I don't know, but I was like, that's the first thing I saw, I thought was like, Cards don't work that way, and B, that's not right. But yeah, it was, it was pretty hilarious. And but um, he was like, um, but you're, but yeah, he tries to take, he tries to take action on, his, he tries to take action in his own hands by taking that battery, and we find out it's too unstable by making a car randomly explode like that. But yeah. um, yeah, and it shows, and it shows a little bit more depth, and that's what I like, and that's what I like about these um episodes. It's like we're seeing that, yeah, on the exterior that like we are. I mean, if we look back at the very first episode that we recorded, we were like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, what is up with these guys and their attitude? Now I'm like, oh my god, I love these people so much. It's really good, They're what they're doing with it. But, um, yeah, I mean, kind of just getting back to it, it's, uh, you have this particular issue between where Ian's just like, I don't want to be a part of the team at all. And uh, he has his own reasons. He basically, I think it's a little bit of he doesn't want to get attached to anyone for fear of they might get, you know, that he might lose them. Like what, like basically what he did with uh, Mifune, his friend. And um, so I think that's kind of the issue behind itself. But um, yeah, no, uh, you, you kind of see a little bit more of his character. He does a complete 180 as far as his personality is concerned. At first, he's just like, I'm really cool, I'm standoffish, I don't really want to deal with these guys, etc., etc., etc. And then he's just like, oh, well, you know what, I guess I like them. I guess they're okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess I'll fight with them. And that's pretty much that. I mean, he, he joins the team pretty much in and of that. So it was, was just a bit weird. It's, there's a line I like, and this is like what I like about whenever I, whenever there's an like overconfident character and they, they don't like the other characters. It's like, you, and, but you know secretly they really like each other as like friends. There's this line that, yeah. that Ian says to him. like, don't worry, if you, if you die, like, if you don't die, I'm going to take care of you personally. And it's like, yeah. Or he's just like, I'm going to be the one to take you out. Like, he doesn't, like, I think it was um, another time something like that happened. I think it was... Uh, was uh, with Chiaki and, and Takeru, uh-huh. where 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chucky wanted to be better than than Takeru, and he's just like you know, he's like no one ever, you know, no one's allowed to beat you, only me. And then uh, Sukasa and 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 uh, and Taiki, and where they're just like, oh, Sukasa, I'm gonna be the one to kill you. Yeah. And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just, just, just shit like that. Like you know, you have characters that are like that. Like, oh, I'm gonna be the one to kill you, but you know, you can tell. There's been some thoughts. Yeah, there's been like, some thoughts. They're like, you know, uh, the, the, whatever for whatever reason, he's actually a pretty good good guy. He checks out. Let's yeah. go. And that's what I like though. It's like you can tell, like he's like you. It's you can tell he's he says that to him, just so you can like, you know, I'm gonna end up I'm gonna end up like liking this guy. So you know what, whatever. I'm just gonna say that just to, yeah. to save face. Yeah, no, he he's 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 a pretty good character. He's he's one of those cool guys. So that's really when it comes out. So he, long story short, he joins the team. Um, they they get their beast batteries back, and they work together as a team. And it's it's pretty awesome. We have our four our first full team henshin basically. And it was and awesome. yeah. I, I always love laughing. I always like, you know, kind of like dissecting the team henshins because you can tell which actors and actors, you know, which actors are really, really into it and which ones aren't. And, like, I remember specifically with Go Kaiger, um, almost everyone else, almost everyone was really, really into it except Luca. Like, Mount Ichimichi, if you look by it, she just kind of seemed like, eh, Go Kai change. That's yeah. it. Like, everyone else is just, like, throwing their weight into the change and doing the pose and everything like that. But, I mean, looking at this particular henshin, I, everyone almost looks into it, except uh, except Shoji, uh, Soji, but uh, they, they all pretty much, you know, because this isn't one that you can kind of just kind of half-ass. This, this, yeah, you this have particular... to do the whole song and dance yourself. Exactly. <laughs> And like you said, like yeah. uh, hopefully soon they'll they'll find a way so they won't have to do the song and dance every fucking time. But I don't doubt you know, that at all. I really think that's gonna happen. But I mean, I yeah. don't. I don't think it's gonna happen. At all, but I'm it's, pretty sure it's, gonna it's happen, really like cool. eventually. But because like like it just takes too long. I'm pretty sure like mm -hmm, yeah yeah uh huh. But yeah. But uh, um, say with that in mind, yeah, you can tell it's like you know. You can tell they really that they must have practiced this day and night just to get this right, and you know them doing it all all at once was very awesome. Yeah. Plus the fact that they uh, they 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 got their weapons uh, right after they changed. It says very mucho. And for those of us that are, I mean, well, I'm somewhat bilingual. I'm not like fully bilingual, but why are they saying very more? I mean, unless I, they. I don't think it, mucho isn't really like, because I don't speak any other, you know, like I would say, you know, Latin languages or you know, Latin-based languages. But mucho pretty much means more. Yeah, but I think it's like more but, something or something like that, like more, more power, more something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm. Really I, guess, I guess so, but yeah, it's it's a it's a bit weird. I always kind of like giggle when uh, shows like this, you know. Uh, where sometimes they barely speak English in and of it that, but they use other languages like such as Spanish, um, or you know other languages like uh, I think it was O's. They actually use a bit of German a few different times, just because you know the show was kind of based. Uh, I would say like uh, in Latin. a European standpoint, they had yeah, Latin. Um, it was very Latin based because those symbols are Latin based. Yeah, so. Um, so after this team change, we actually have the, um, we have their, uh, this was really, really interesting. As I was mentioning it earlier, it's one of the first times in a while, I think since, I'm going to say, Go Sager, where they had their own unique weapons. Because yeah. before it was with, with, um, with, uh, with Go Buster and then also Go Kaiser, they had their team weapons and they weren't really individualized. I mean, with Go with with Go Kaiser, they had their own different uses for them. I mean, yeah. uh, I had the, the the two guns in one, where basically she would just pull, put both guns in one hand, and then you had Luca, where she would just you know combine the swords together, um, and then you had oh, you know yeah. he uh, put all the swords together and use them and do the he had all five together at once, and then Don was just like. He didn't really have anything like that. Um, yeah. At least um, I don't think so. No, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember anything off off of my top of my head myself. 
he just had his weird movements where he did like parts of like seriously like he did like lucha libre stuff like he did hurricane ranas and stuff like yeah. that he, he yeah that was really the best situation yes yeah but um so we find out what uh what the uh what the um that particular battery that ian tried to take was it's the um it's Comedy the uh, i can't remember it yeah it's basically it's the um the kentro spiker which yeah. is basically it's all of their personal weapons combined and do you know what a what it, it's apparently a rocket, I guess. That's that's essentially what it looks like. They basically spear. combine. Them. It's a spear, but they throw it like a freaking rocket. Yeah. And it actually has a turbine on. Yeah. And I'm looking at it right now. The Voltaser, you know, the uh, the uh, a the Juden spear. <laughs> yeah, it looks really, really awesome. Like I'm looking at it right now, and that thing looks like. It's straight up just. It looks. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty awesome. Plus, I love it when they um when they when they get their personalized weapons. They have that giant armored sleeve, where it's just it's the spikes going down their arm. That looks really really badass. Yeah. But uh, also with this particular episode too, we have the uh, the formation of the um. It, basically, it's a new formation. It's the uh, the Kyo-yu what's res- it called? Western. You're using yeah. Western. Let me see. I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, here we go. Yeah, it's yeah, Eurasian Western Yeehaw, um, which uh, I think it's pretty interesting. It kind of reminds me of um, of uh, of uh, I can't. Remember. I'm, I'm having major, major brain farts. This is why I shouldn't drink before a podcast. But it's just so much more entertaining. I know. Um, <laughs> um, I think it's Daikyo from uh, from Shinkenger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Daikyo. Where it had its different formations. Mm-hmm. Where you had, um, basically, you had... Uh, uh, it, 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 they were basically different. I believe, wasn't it... Uh, it was different... Um, it had random different formations, basically. I'm looking it up right now. You had uh, uh, you had Higashi, uh, Nishi, Minami, and um, I think those were the only three at that point. And then it had the uh, it had the fourth when it combined with Ika Daikaya, or when it combined with Ika Origami. Um, yeah, and it also like there there are other sentais that have done this as well. Like with um, I'm remembering Go- Bokinger when they used to have their when he used to have different um, vehicles as well. Yeah, and then also uh, Time Ranger. Yeah. When they had I think Alpha when they had uh, Time Alpha, Robo Alpha yeah, and then Beta Sigma I believe. I think so. That was the one when it combined. Yeah. So it, it it is really cool when you have different formations in the main mecha with the you know the actual the main team itself or the you know the the in, in actual team itself, um, but I'm I'm really hoping that there's a way that all five of them can combine at once without having to have to swap them out. But I sure, don't know. If- I'm pretty sure there will be like I'm pretty sure when they introduce a new Kyoryuga, which I'm pretty sure like we're already gonna get Cyan next episode. Spoiler. But yeah. I'm pretty sure eventually down the road they're gonna be like, here's a, here is this battery. It will combine everything and like, oh, and then it's gonna be like so this Im- battery. It'll be this immovable they, brick. Yeah, it's only awakened when you uh, you know, when you all work together as a team and and just stuff like that. And you're and... looking at a team and the, the you know you also have to like make sure it's on the you know twelve o'clock on a Tuesday. On, yeah, like, well, you... on the, oh, every fourth Tuesday <laughs> of. of, of... <laughs> Like very like they they all have to read they have to the fine print it's all legal it's like what the hell timeshares we have to get timeshares now what yeah and just they have to meet all these random ass requirements it's just like basically getting achievements or specific items in random games you have to like basically meet all these requirements before you're able to go ahead and do that and then after that after you finally get it. You're able to basically, what's it called, just combine, like, nothing else. Like, oh, let's call upon it right now. Let's spam this particular formation since we've already met those, you know, bullshit requirements. Um, like I said, like, the only way that this is going to work and the only way that it's I'm seeing this happen is if it's going to be, like, this immovable brick. Yeah, it's going to be the clusterfuck mecha. No, <laughs> I'm... I'm pretty sure it's going to... I think the closest it will, it will look like, I think it's going to be, like, how Go Buster, um... 
How go go? Uh, oh, what's the name of the form? Like not Go Buster Ace, but Go Buster. Um, I forgot the name of the, the actual formation of Go Buster. Like when the main max, not Go Buster King, or Lyo, not or the other formations with Lyo. No, it's the it's the other one. But um, getting back to that point, I'm thinking of that where they have all all the all the for all the other mechas combined to each other without Lyo. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure, and that was so movable. And then it's like I'm pretty sure they're gonna. I'm. This is the kind of show I foresee them doing like that, like them going to do the Samurai How mode, where it's just like <laughs> this. Amazingly... It's just basically a, it's just a thing on rollers with with working like with like strings to move the arms and stuff like that. Like that's all it really is. It's like actually no, you have a dude on you have a dude on a ledge, like he's on this like little basically. It's like on like a little push cart type thing, and he's just inside this thing, just only being able to move the arms. That's it. Like they just push this kind of thing out of the way, and then the guy's in there and he's just moving his arms. Like you guys can't see it right now, but I'm reenacting it. It's hilarious. At least it is to me. But um, yeah, no, it's probably just gonna be like that, where it's just this giant, giant, you know, stacked upon stacked upon stacked upon stack upon stack. And, I, and the, the uh, worst part is I miss that from Sentai. I miss Samurai Haro. I miss G12. When they didn't do it in the other series, like I, I felt kind of sad because I, I was waiting for that. I was like expecting, let's put everything together. I missed that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, back, it's... We're, we are deviated so far away. But getting back to the main point, Kyoryu's in uh, Western is I like it. Like I think this is actually my favorite formation. Yeah, it, it is pretty awesome. It has Zakator's blade arm, and then it has Percy Gun's uh, gun arm, basically, mm-hmm. and uh, it's pretty awesome. I like I liked it a lot. Like you know, if I, if I were to get any if I were to get any like toy, I would get that I'll get it in that formation. If if I was gonna get anything from Kyoryuger, with the Mecha. Yeah. So, is that pretty much about it? About the, is that pretty much about it? Your thoughts on um on Kyoryuger? Yeah, I mean, as far as this week's episode, next week's episode looks actually pretty good. Uh, we're going to have a clashing of personalities between Ian and, and Soji, so I'm actually really excited to see that because it's, it's fairly early on, but I think they're probably going to accomplish a lot with that particular uh, story, you know, with, with that particular episode. Um, so yeah, that, that's it for me on, on, Kyoryuger, uh, on Kyoryuger episode 4. Yeah, um, I'm, pr- I'm, pretty, I'm pretty spent myself, like... I uh, I expressed my thoughts earlier on where I just love this episode and like I said, I was not expecting to really love this show. I really wasn't. I was going in thinking this show is gonna be completely stupid. This and that, blah blah blah. But I'm like, oh my god, this show is awesome. Mm-hmm. It was really good, so really really good. Why don't we go on to our last show of the week and that is Common Writer Wizard episode twenty six. So, this episode, I mean, it's, it shows us our recap of what happened within the past episode where it was just all the stuff happened at the end where it was, like, really, really awesome. And you had this, you know, really cool teamwork between Beast and Wizard. Um, but essentially, this episode starts off with a... Uh, you know, you kind of see through the eyes of a phantom in this situation where yeah. it's just all this craziness and you actually where they hone in on, on who the next gate is. And then you have Gremlin being a troll as usual. And he uses a name that apparently Medusa does not like. She doesn't like yeah. being called Misa, which this mm-hmm. is actually going to play into a big part of this particular episode. Hint, hint. So, uh, huh? I said hint, hint, the, the, like just as. Anyway, so yeah, on. it's a big part of this particular episode. So, um,. Gremlin uh, kind of mentioned something about the next gate, and Misa's just like, no. She's like, I'm not going to go ahead and deal with you. She's like, I don't like dealing with you. You're, you know, you just scheme all the time. And Gremlin is just like, oh, me? <laughs> no. Like, I, I, I hate Gremlin. I really do. I think that's like, it's like, the concept. I think that's the idea. We're supposed to fucking hate this guy. He's just a slime like, ball. It's like uh, Atoya and, uh, and, uh, and, and Bosco and Enner... It's like if you mix all three of them, he, he kind of seemed really, really annoying as far as uh, 
I mean, I don't want to get into it. I really don't, because these guys just kind of make me mad in a sense. Yeah. But, um, so he's kind of antagonizing Medusa about this, and she's just like, she's like, I don't want to talk about it. And you have, um, you have Kosuke, and he's at a park, and he's just, you know, spinning around his mayonnaise bottle, and he sees this girl, and lo and behold, it's Medusa. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, hey, he's like, wait, I've seen you before. Oh well, I'm gonna go ahead and just pour mayonnaise onto my um, my uh, my uh, my onigiri, and so he's just like, "Hey, it's that one lady phantom." And he's yeah, like, "Wait, like, why is she dressed like a schoolgirl?" Yeah, and he's just like, "Oh, whatever, I'm gonna eat." And oh my god, him and that mayonnaise, man! I love uh, it. It's, I mean, I hate regular mayonnaise, but Japanese mayonnaise actually, it's it's a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, he just hounds that stuff down, and uh, it's gnarls. But uh, he he sees all these these all these schoolgirls, and he's just like, oh my god! And we actually see, I guess, I guess Kosuke uh, Kosuke likes some some schoolgirls. I don't blame him, but uh, I, yeah, so... <laughs> it's like, oh god, what's happening? Already, it's like already went to zero to Kosuke in like in about like about like three minutes into this episode. Yeah, just a whole new side of him. So the next time we we take uh we're, we're taken to the uh, the, the NK shop, and uh, Haruto gets a new ring, and it's a golem. So he's just like, oh sweet, uh, it'll be a new familiar, and uh, so he puts it together, and this thing is just like completely super shy. This thing is just like, no, and then he just runs away. He runs under, I think it was like a chair or a table or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he runs under the table, well, and like, everyone's like, aw, it's, it's, it's shy. Aw, we'll give it a few minutes. The rest of you go. Yeah, basically. So that ends up happening, and they're just like, okay, so what do we do with that? And um, so uh, what ends up happening a little bit later is Kosuke is going up to all of these random school kids, and he's trying to find Medusa. And he's like, no, that's not you. That's not you. And he sees a girl that's apparently wearing somewhat of a similar type of clothing, like a beige kind of thing. He goes up and he's like, oh, that's no, actually, no. Yeah, you're right. No, keep going. That's a little bit later. It's 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 a girl wearing similar clothing. Yeah. And he goes up to her. I found you. I got you. And all these people come up to him and they think he's like some kind of crazy pervert. And so he sees her. And uh, he's just like, oh, crap. So he just, he just gets mobbed. And he crawls out of it the, 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 the normal cliche way of getting away from a mob. You just crawl out from under their feet. Yeah. So he sees her and he goes after her and he's just like, oh, crap. He's like, that's not her. And so he's looking around, looking around, looking around. And then what ends up happening, he sees Medusa. And he's like, oh, there she is. And uh, he goes and he, he tries to attack her. And uh, he's he's got some decent moves, but he's just a, a completely clumsy guy. Um, no, he heals his own. He heals his own pretty well, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I guess I would say that. But um, basically, he's just like, oh, he's like, um, he's like, what were you doing in those schoolgirls? And she's like, what are you talking about? He's like, all right, well, whatever, I'm gonna eat ya. And um. It's pretty much it, and so he, uh, he he tries to take her on, and he's kicking her ass for the majority of it, and then what does he do? He brings out, uh, I think the first one was he uh, he pulls out the uh, the dolphin cloak, and that does some good damage, and uh, he, got, he ends he up rolling lucky. a six. Yeah, he got, he, he got lucky, and he got a six on it, and she's on the ropes, and he's like, all right, one more time, and he gets the Falco uh, cloak, and he's like, all right, let's see what we get, and he gets a one. So he's not very lucky at this. Point. So that's one thing I, I, I that's one thing I found interesting. It's like that's his abilities is by luck of by like the chance of luck. Basically, he's rolling a dice in a sense. Yeah, it's it's that's pretty much what it is. And he's just like, oh crap! He's like, I got a one, and she ends up just beating him down, and um, so he's taken out, and he's just like, all right, he's like, I gotta find her, and so he finds her. He, well, he, he thinks he finds her dressed up in her school clothes, and he's just like, uh, what's it called? He, you know, he kind of attacks her, and, and he's like, I'm gonna eat you up, and she's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And so he sees, this guy comes up to him, he's like, hey, what are you doing? And he pushes him off, and he throws him down, and then he's like, hey! And he's like, oh, crap, it's a cop! He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, he's like, I have a good explanation for this, he's like, I can explain, I can explain, and then bam, cuffed. 
And then, uh, so he gets arrested, and he gets dragged away. That was the funniest thing. And, I mean, um, it wasn't like, it wasn't that he got dragged away. No, it wasn't like dragged away as I'm like, oh no. He was like, on the ground, like, like a, a little kid being pulled away from the toy aisle. Just straight up kicking and screaming at this <laughs> exactly. point. Exactly, I'm like, oh my god. Dude, Kosuke, come on, dude. Show some, at least a bit of this, and yeah. I'm like, oh, it's Kosuke, never mind. Yeah, and so, like, Haruto shows up, and he's like, oh, what did Mayonnaise get into this time? Like, I love that that's his nickname. For him. He just calls him exactly. Mayonnaise. Um, but, uh, so, uh, he's just like, uh, Shunpei's just like, oh, should we help him out? And Haruto's like, no. And just, like, not even thinking, he just says, nope, let's not help him out. But then they both see, they both see Medusa, and they think, you know, it's like, oh, this crazy grand scheme. So... I, I thought it was hilarious, uh, Kosuke getting taken away, and he runs into Rinko, and Rinko's like, what are you doing here? And then this crap happens, and he's just like, oh, well, whatever. And then Harsho goes undercover, just as a, you know, a school, uh, he's, he's in a school uniform and everything like that. And, I mean, this this kind of threw me for a major loop, Medusa being super, super civil around yeah. all these, you know, girls, you can easily turn them into in the next gate. But, um, basically... You find out something, you know, she has this charm that she actually gets, uh, she actually, you know, it, it kind of helps her out. And uh, <laughs> the next thing we see is Shenpei dressed up like, <laughs> he, he, he's, a, he, he's, he's in drag, but he pulls it off so damn well. Like, here's the thing, <laughs> like, here's the thing, here's what I like, um, um, Haruto... I'm for, he, he uses a spell to get to get a close. Like I'm, I'm wondering like Shunpei, you know Shunpei, Shunpei. And so I'm like thinking, how did he get it? I'm like thinking that he just went through Rinko's like closet and just. Get all this? Well, if if she did have it, yeah, maybe I don't know. He he gets his he gets his uniform, this wig, and everything like that, and he pulls it off, and he's getting super enthusiastic about it. He's like, yeah. He's like, all right. He's like, I'm in drag. I mean, for those of you that are that are unaware, I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, then you obviously know. Uh, for certain actors, it's it's not really too big of a deal for them to dress in drag. A lot of them do it. A lot of them. Um, I on a regular basis, I see a few pictures of um, of uh, what was the actor's name that played um, uh, that played a uh, 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 sword. I can't remember his name. Oh, um, God, I'm thinking, but uh, the one that, the one that sticks out in my mind was Takeru Sato when he was when he did Princess Princess D. Yeah, I, I believe that's him. Let me go ahead and I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up my uh, my, my my writer database right now. Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and so I'm gonna take a look right now just to see if I can find the actor's name. And I'll continue um, on while you're looking. So, and so yeah. basically, the uh, Hoto and so basically Hoto and Shinpei are spying on this girl who could be um who could be Medusa. And and they're all like, and everyone's like, even Haruto's like, what is going on here? He's she's acting way too civil for being Medusa. And yeah. of course, Shunpei's like, he, uh, Shunpei he has to go to the bathroom, and it's one of those like, lol, like, uh, lol, I'm in the men's bathroom and I'm a girl. Yeah, and... that oh, that particular scene, and he just he's playing so long to it. That was the funniest thing about it. Um, uh, and, so, and you hear, he's just like, they're like, oh, what the crap, you know, what the heck? And he's just like, oh, uh, he's like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to be a girl. What do I do? And <laughs> so he drops something on the floor and he sees Medusa and Medusa's just like, uh, she's just like, uh, what the hell's going like, on? Why like, is oh, everyone afraid of me? And, yeah. And then, and, and Shunpei's just like, oh my God, and he just runs away all scared and the funniest thing about that was is that he runs away, he runs over to Haruto, and he has his shoe in his hand, and he's pointing back, and then Haruto grabs his shoe, and he's acting like it's a phone, and he's smelling it, and he's like, uh, he's like, oh, uh, let me just, uh, he's like, oh, oh, I'm just, uh, I'm talking on the phone right here, uh, it's a shoe, and, um, he's being oh, that was hilarious, but, uh, for a minute, and he realizes, wait a minute, this is who shoe? Oh, ooh, 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 ah, ah. Yeah. So uh, I pulled it up, and um, the actor was uh, the actor is um, is uh, Yusuke Yamamoto or Surugi Kamashiro. 
uh, Kamen Rider Sasword. Uh, he was the one that said, uh, uh, basically the one that was super enthusiastic about it. And I don't want to say anything else about Kabuto because I'd probably ruin it. But basically, uh, there's a lot of pictures of Yusuke Yamamoto uh, in different stage shows and things like that where he is actually, you know, playing female characters. But it's it's very very normal for them to do over there. It's not too big of a deal, and it's you know it's it's kind of more I w- I would say on a joking basis there, but like it's it's not too big of a deal for them. I, I guess I should say. But yeah. um, Senpei pulls it off. It. He really really does he, more than um, Rami. Uh, you you've seen the uh, the Decker Ranger versus Magic Ranger movie, right? Of course. You know what scene I'm talking about, don't you? Yes. Yes, very much so. <laughs> Where they go and drag to try and, uh, you know, uh, basically, uh, they, uh, uh, I, I would say, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't even talk right now. What are so, distract the monster. They try and distract the particular monster while they free the other members of the team. Yeah. And they're dressed in drag. Oh, man, that was hilarious. But um, yeah, it, they they didn't pull it off that as well as as Shunpei does. Shunpei is just like, you'd seriously think he was like, oh, this was hilarious. This particular scene, uh, where um, they the the they're like spying on it, they're like, okay, where is this at right here? Uh, they see um, they see Medusa and she's eating lunch with her friends, and they're like, oh, you know, um, like are are you you know how come you're not hungry? And she's just like, oh, well, you know, I'm not, I'm just not that hungry. And they're they're spying on her. And Shunpei is just resting his head on Haruto's shoulder, stroking, you know, rub, you know, playing with his <laughs> hair. <laughs> and he's he's just getting so into it. And so and so Haruto is just like, and he has a donut, and and Shunpei is just like, what did, did you get? That? He's like, all right, divide it. And Haruto is just like pulling it away as soon as he tries to divide it. It's, this is, this is... it's the little. Thing. It's the little things in this episode, and, and just in, in the series it's, in itself, it's the little things that just they just add it. They just add to it so much. But um, you find out what ends up happening in the situation. Basically, Rinko discovers that Medusa isn't the, the, she isn't she isn't dressing up as a schoolgirl. You actually see it a little bit later in the episode, towards the end of the episode. Basically, what ends up happening is Medusa. And the, the schoolgirl, they're twin sisters. Mm-hmm. And, and their then, parents uh, were kidnapped. Yeah, the parents and were, at this, were missing. It, it's, it's, it's evident that, that Medusa gave in to despair, and, which yeah. is why Medusa was born. But yeah, basically, they're, they're twin sisters. Um, yeah. Uh, Mayu. Mayu and, and Misa. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mayu is the schoolgirl. Misa is, is uh, basically uh, Medusa. And so Rinko goes to free uh, Kosuke, and she's just like, you were wrong. It's not Medusa as a schoolgirl. They're twin sisters. I'll explain on the way. Come on. And so uh, in this situation, you know, you kind of find out basically this is really what happens. Um, parents go missing. It's going to be explained a little bit more in the episode itself, but Mayu isn't necessarily the gate in this situation. It's one of her no. friends. Yeah, it's one of her gate. That's what's crazy. And but yet, it's yeah. so focused on her. Yeah, and so, you know, Mayu just ended up being in, you know, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily say the wrong place at the wrong time, but she saw her sister, which she shouldn't have been, uh, which I guess, you know, she didn't know of. I guess they, they, the sister, Misa, and the parents have been missing for quite some time in Mayu. The, the only thing that's kind of keeping her going is, um, is, uh, is the fact that, you know, they may still be alive somewhere, and, um, even Rinko calls out Shunpei on his uh, on his uh, on his outfit, and he's just like, "Oh, you know me," and uh, it's just hilarious. Yeah. Um, and then you have Wizard's kind of broken ability when he's in Dragon, is that he can summon the other three. He can summon you know Land Dragon, Water Dragon, and Wind Dragon. And um, oh god, Gremlins laugh. I just hate so damn much. I really do. Like. I'd rather listen to Fran Drescher just berate me for about a good two or three hours than listen. Actually, I'd rather listen to Nickelback's entire discography than listen to Gremlins um, laugh. Yeah. That's that's the, in and of itself. But um, we actually uh, in in this situation, 
it, not in this situation, but in the next episode, apparently you see more of Medici's backstory, which <laughs> I'm kind of anxious to see, just because in I, I really like it when they kind of add more than just we're from an ancient civilization or we're from this particular civilization, and we want to go and take over the world. Yeah, it's it's good to add more to the character than and what what's that really evident. Yeah, and this is what I'm really loving about Wizard. It's like. Well, before the show, me and me were like, "Oh, you and me were like, oh my god!" Like, yeah, we were we were laughing at we were laughing at uh, Shinpei and his drag, and we got into this really weird conversation. But other than that, like, we we both we both agreed this is getting really good. And I said to yeah. myself, "I'm really getting scared of this. Like, I'm really really loving this, but I'm also getting really scared at the same time that the guy's gonna drop this hard." But I doubt it because they're. It's so well written. It's so so brilliant. It's like it's been a while yeah. since I watched a series that's so that I watched anything. Period. Whether it be like regular it's... TV or movies or anything, I I watch everything. I you name it, I watch it, read it, or anything like that. I've never been this engaged in my life in a while. I'm really really looking forward to like wondering what's gonna happen next. The fact of it is, is that you know it's it's a good series for what it is. You have a lot of uh, character development, and it's not before where it was just like, oh, the characters are here. That's that. Um, no, there's actually a lot more to them, and plus, it, that's really. I mean, that's all I can necessarily say in this situation. But it's it's really good. It's really really good. Yeah, like I said, like I said, I. Well, I'm loving where this is going to go. I'm really intrigued by the story of Medusa. And, like, like I know you hate this, but I found it really interesting that at the end of the episode, too, like, you just see that little fucking troll gremlin, like, hee 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 let's see what happens next. And he's like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Because, like, what made, what made the last episode so awesome was the fact that this guy was like on top of everything. It's like, can anyone stop this guy? And like I, like I said, I just want to see this guy get right or kicked into, like if there's like if if they can right or kick him right next to Phoenix, that would be awesome. I I honestly think he's gonna be exactly like um, uh, in Geki Ranger, uh, uh, in Geki Ranger. Um, uh, I can't remember his name. Um. I'm like uh, long, long. Oh, yeah, long. Uh, I think That's that was right. his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where he's like the troll, and he's just there, and he's like, he's like, oh, you can't really get rid of me. And then also comparable to, um, to uh, I think uh, uh, Akumaru in um, in uh, in uh, in uh, uh, brain fart. Um, Akumaru in um, in Shinkenger. He was a pretty bad troll. Yeah, not like bad in the terms of like annoying, but he, he was a troll. Not just that. At least I can say. I mean, I I mean the reason why I like that is because like that's the kind of villain that we need in a show like this, where it's just like yeah, intrigued. no, it, yeah, it, it it definitely is. It definitely is. Because like the thing is, um. I mean, it'd be pretty boring if they just if they just went through like an entire line of, of of bad guys and they all had this tragic backstory, and just to have someone like stir the pot once in a while, that is amazing. And like that's, I I really cannot wait to see what happens next. And like, <laughs> I got a confession to make. I think I don't know if I said this. I don't know if I said this on the air, but. Oh, I was not down on Wizard at first. I really wasn't. And now, I'm like, I am the world's biggest idiot. I really am. And now, the more I'm watching the show, I'm like... Ugh. Like, I really want to kick myself for not getting into it earlier, but thank God I marathoned it, and now we're at this point where I'm like... Wow. I, I there's, There is no words to describe it right now. It's like, this is like my favorite... like. This is like my favorite show. Period. Like this beats out even like regular TV shows I'm watching right now. I don't really watch that many regular TV shows, and any, t- any it, show I do watch, it's it's very it's really good, and it even beats that. 
yeah, it's it ha- it was kind of it, it was really slow starting out, but it had a good amount of. Um, I mean, I, I've said this before. I really hate the kind of like super super character development orientated shit like that. It, it just it's hard to explain, but um, no, the wizard did a good job of it. It it kind of got stale for a bit for me, but then it really it picked right back up. Um, I think kind of when when East got involved, that's when it it really like kind of pushed it over, and I was just like, all right, I got to get back into this because it's fucking awesome. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, as far as like Wizards concerned, for me, I, it's it's a good, it's getting a lot for me. It's like almost every other writer series has been good. I didn't care for Fours because it was too damn cheeky. Um, Oh, it was God. Oh, was I love so much. And the thing um, is, like, Oz, I, it's like, it has its fan. It, it either really like it or really hate it. Guess where I am? I'm on the really love it side. Oh, yeah, same here. So it's like, love thank it. God I meet someone um, else that loves it. So, yay. And then... And then uh, with the double... double I, I, didn't, I didn't care for it. I really couldn't get into it. I watched, like, two or three episodes, and I'm just like... Oh... And I don't blame you. Like you said, like, I, I love I love Double, but you know what? I understand, too. They're, they're, it's not for everyone. I don't, I'm, I'm in that, uh, you know, here's the thing. I'm a very understanding guy. Like, yeah. I understand when you don't like something, that is perfectly fine. We're adults. You have your opinion. I'm not going to thrust my opinion because, quite frankly, my agenda is my agenda. Your agenda is your agenda. So, like, you can say whatever you want. Like, well, fine. Like, I understand. Like, it's not really your thing. Cause, like, I don't know. Like, it, it just feels out there t- at times, doesn't it? Uh, and then I was gonna say, even before that, uh, everyone, I think the majority of people they really got into. Uh, uh, that was a gnarly burp. Um, but yeah, uh, the series that kind of like touch base for a lot of fans, and uh, the thing that kind of pulled a lot of people in was. Common Rider Decayed. Really? I think a lot of people got that, that I mean, because of Double. Because... A lot of people... From my understanding, from what I heard, a lot of people really gave the series more recognition, or, you know, they watched a lot more because of um, of Decay. That's how they really got into it. That's basically how a lot of them found out about the actual series in and of itself. So, or... I, I know a lot of people that I talk to, they're like, oh, Decade's the best, Decade's the best, Decade's the best. And I'm like, well, I mean, it was cool that they brought in a lot of the, you know, the, the, the previous series, but they did, they went about it the wrong way. Yeah, and then, any, and just before they can have anything salvageable, it subtly ended, and then we got double. It's a good series. Uh, if you aren't watching it and you've listened to our synopsis, watch the series. You'll enjoy it. I can guarantee yeah. it. I put Ramsey's ass on the line that you will enjoy the series. Um, Thank you. <laughs> you're going to offer up your butt for it. I'm sorry. That's just the way it has to be. It's not the first time I've done this. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, in, in that, that's, that's pretty much it for me at this point. Well, that's it for me also. It's just like there's nothing really much other to say than just go watch the show. I don't know how you're going to watch it. Just go watch it. Uh, I won't say how, but just go watch it some way, somehow. And, yeah, like, uh, next week, my God, if I if I haven't, like, exploded by then from, like, the excitement, then I don't know, well, like, what will. But, like, seriously, st- stay tuned next week, man, because, like, I swear to God, we're going to have a lot of good opinions about what's going to happen next with these shows, especially Kill Yogurt and and Wizard, man. Seriously. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's going to be a lot of fun. Indeed. Anyways, I think I better close it out for this for this one episode, shall we? Yep. All righty then. So you can find us at www.plasticjoint.com. Again, you can find us at www.plasticjoint.com. So as for me, I am the Pope Ramsey's the first, and to the, to the left of me is Pope Eric Sacedo the first as well, saying, Vaya con Dios. See ya! Yeah. <laughs>